keeps it. <laughs> Move, moving right along at our speedy pace, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, we're on week three of the Motrack models built along on new tracks. And we are building the Alton Fire Station, which is located in Alton Bay, New Hampshire. And I won't go over its history again. If you want to know about it, go see the previous shows. So in week three, we'll be painting and assembling the windows. We'll be installing the windows and the shades and assembling the walls. Uh, now, for the O scale and the S scale models, the windows are laser cut. For the HO1s, the windows and doors are tishy. And in the N scale, it's a mixed bag. Some are laser cut and some are cast. Uh, these are the S scale laser cut windows since I'm building the S scale kit. Now, um, last week I showed you that I brush painted the front doors with a white paint. I didn't want to do that with the laser cut windows because brush painting fine items like this you can get some paint build up and getting all of the edges and everything is difficult. So I use my airbrush to paint it. And you can see I had the door parts that were on this masked off because they're going to be painted red later. Now, once I had all the windows painted, I popped them all out. And if you're working with the laser cut windows, you'll have three parts like this. Uh, the window frame and the upper and lower sash. When you're putting these together, you want to make sure to align these two thin parts. Uh, don't get this part upside down when you're putting it in there. It won't look right. And this is what it looks like when you have all three parts together. This is from the back. You have the lower sash, the upper sash, and the window frame. And this is from the front. Uh, and then, so once you have that oriented correctly, you can start putting them all together. I use canopy glue on this. It's a nice thin glue. You can just put a few little spots on with your toothpick, which I think is the best tool in the world. And put on some music and just put together a whole bunch of windows and all of a sudden you're done. One of the nice things about putting together the laser cut windows is you can have them open to any extent you want. Uh, it's a little detail in, the, in on this one. I had a couple of the windows open and the rest of them closed. Once I had all my windows put together, I used my wire brush to go over the wood just a little bit, give it some grain before I started staining them. And then once I had distressed all the wood, I got all my windows together and started staining them. This was just to make them look not like they were freshly painted. Uh, the fire station is not supposed to look like it's run down, but it doesn't take very long for something freshly painted to look just a little bit aged and weathered. Once that's done, we're going to start putting the acetate in the windows. Uh, I first went to the front doors of the building. And the piece of acetate was big enough that you could glue it onto the back of the door and it would look okay. But I wanted it to set down in the little opening right up against the mullions. So since it was too big for that, I used a scalpel for cutting it. And if you've never used a scalpel before, they're one of the best things in the world for slicing acetate. And they have a lot of other good uses as well. But I just took a little bit off the top and the end, and that way it nestled right down into the opening. And then I just used a little bit of liquid PSA and glued them in place. Then I turned to the main windows. And again, I used liquid PSA for this. And I'll show you why. So I got all of the pieces of acetate, and they were laser cut to fit both the upper and lower sashes of this. So I didn't have to do any cutting on them. And I just laid out my pieces. And then I put a few spots of the liquid PSA on the upper and lower sashes. And once you let the PSA dry for just a minute or two, then when you press the acetate on it, it doesn't squeeze out the way a liquid glue would if you would put liquid glue on it and then put the acetate on before it dried. 
And this way you avoid getting any type of glue squeezing out onto your glass. And I think I picked up this tip on the PSA from Bill Davis. So once I had all of my acetate glued into the windows, I moved on to the side door. And this door was supposed to be red. So I used my red paint and just dry brushed the frame, the inner part of the door, and the outer trim of the door. Once I had dry brushed them and it had dried, I glued the pieces together. And this shows you the inner and outer piece of the door. And then I put the glass, or the acetate behind the door, again, using the PSA. Now at this point, you have all your windows ready to be put into the building. And for this, I use canopy glue. You could use Elmer's or a tacky glue. Um, I just run a bead around the inside of the window edge and then stick the window in. You want to make sure you get your windows right side up. Uh, I'm sure everyone's lived in a house that had uh, double sash windows and you know the upper one hangs out over the lower one. If you put them in upside down, people will point and laugh at you. So glue all your windows into the walls. And then I turned all the walls over and started putting in the window shades. Uh, Jeff had also supplied laser cut window shades in the kit. Uh, for some of them, I'd put them in full length. And for others, I'd cut a piece off so that it would be a shorter window shade. Um, usually you want to go with some variation in that. To glue them in, I just dip the top of the shade in a little bit of glue that I have on my glue palette and then stick it right on. That's all you need and it'll hold it in place. And then to put the side door in, I first glued the frame onto the side wall and then once it was dry, I got the door and glued it behind the frame in the opening. If you have the HO kit, I think you have a tissue door that glues in here. And this is the door glued in place. And then further along, I put a doorknob on it. So at this point, we have all of our windows and door in place. Uh, I have these doors sitting here. I wanted to make sure they fit, but they're not glued in place yet. So at this point, we're ready to assemble the walls. And as I had shown you before, I put together the inner and outer walls with the tab so that when we got to this point, I wasn't gonna get any surprises about tabs not lining up. So for gluing the walls together, I just got some of my one, two, three blocks together, a square and some tacky glue. I put the glue on the inside tabs like this, and then used a toothpick to just kind of even it out. Um, I put a little bit on the edges of the outside tabs, but I didn't put it to where it might squeeze out. It is gonna be covered by corner post, but still that's glue that I wouldn't have to scrape away. And then the tabs fit together and I held down the sidewall with my weights and then glued the end wall to it. And this is the backside end wall. And I put a weight up against it to hold it against it and then double checked it while it was drying in place. Then I come back and make sure that it's, it's square once it's dried. I don't know what I could do at that point. I could probably move it if I had to, but I like to confirm that they are square. So then I came to glue the second side wall onto the back wall. This is our corner that's already glued, and this is the corner that's being glued. So I was holding this wall down, and I put the other end wall in place just to hold this upper wall up so it wouldn't be flopping a little bit. And that way, I get a nice square joint here on this second corner. This way, we have both of the side walls attached to the back wall. Now, for gluing the front wall in place, I could do the same thing, gluing one corner at a time, but I don't need to now. I can just put glue on both of the corners and glue it together with clamps, and that takes half as much time.
And then at this point, we have a structure built. And, you know, this one is very strong. These tabs really hold it together well. And everything came out nice and square. And I think planning from gluing the inner and outer walls together at the start helped in this step. So the next thing is to glue the corner trim. And on the larger scales, it's a piece of angle strip wood. I believe in the smaller scales, it's just square strip wood. So I would put glue on the inside of my angle strip wood. And then I've got packages of hundreds of these little micro applicators. And they're perfect for things like this if you just want to spread that glue out some so that it uh, covers all of your corner trim. And after I do that, I just stick it in my rinse water, rub it on a paper towel, and it's good to go again. I don't know how long these things will last, but I sure didn't need 100 of them. And this shows the corner trim glued in place. Now, once you have it there, you may need to do a little bit of sanding or trimming at the top or the bottom, depending on if you cut it before you put it in place. And then I'd come along and stain the corner trim. I didn't do it beforehand because I like to have it glued in place just so it won't introduce any type of warping to the wood. Now, one thing I ran into on this S-scale kit, the walls are just slightly short of the ends of the gables on the end walls. Now, once you put the roofs on, you're not gonna notice that but it does leave about an eighth of an inch gap there. And I wanted to put an extension in there. And the reason I wanted to do that is so I'd have a piece of wood that went all the way up to the roof. So I just cut a piece of strip wood to length and it just happened to fit right in the little slot there. And then I put a bead of glue across the top of that wall and glued the strip wood in place. And it isn't needed for any appearance because you won't be able to see it once the roof's on. But I like having that extra attaching point where I can glue the roof onto the sidewall instead of just onto the end walls. It makes the whole structure a little bit stronger. And this structure is going to be handled a lot. So that has our walls all together. Next week, we're going to start shingling the roof. And remember, this kit has diamond cut shingles, which are a little different to work with than a lot of your square cut. We'll be painting the base that comes with it and then installing the roof on it. And so that's the end of week three.